Hi there, John McAdams here with you again. In this video, we're going to talk about Hornady's new 22 Advanced Rifle Cartridge, better known as the 22 ARC. Now, if there are two things, literally everyone, even those who aren't fans of the company, can agree Hornady does well. It is releasing new cartridges and marketing the heck out of those new products. Well, the new 22 ARC is the latest example of Hornady doing some of the things the company does best. Now, when they made the new 22 ARC, the folks at Hornady were trying to combine the strengths of the highly regarded, very popular 223 Remington and the high octane 22 250 Remington into a single package and to fit into a specific niche no mainstream rifle cartridge currently occupies delivering 22250 level performance out of an AR-15 platform with better performance in the wind and while at the same time delivering phenomenal accuracy. Now, as often happens when any company introduces a new cartridge, some in the hunting and shooting worlds were thrilled with the prospects of the new 22 ARC, but others were less than impressed. So is the 22 ARC just another example of a rifle cartridge developed as a solution to a problem that doesn't really exist, that will just fade into obscurity after a few years? Or is this cartridge going to really take off like some other fruits of the design teams at Hornady, like the 7mm PRC and the 6.5 Creedmoor? So in this episode, I discuss the history, ballistic performance, design characteristics, and strengths and weaknesses of the 22 ARC in detail. I'll also briefly provide some information on how the 22 ARC stacks up next to the 223 Remington and the 22250 to give you an idea of what sort of performance you can expect from the cartridge and so you can decide if it fits your needs as a hunter. So let's get started talking about the 22 ARC. If I wasn't clear earlier, it seems like Hornady designed the 22 ARC primarily as a varmint and target shooting cartridge. That does not mean you can't use it for other applications, but this just really seems like the niche they put it into from the beginning. And that's also not to say that we won't see some other developments with this cartridge that expand its appeal a little bit into other segments of the market. But we'll talk more about that here in a second. Now, since this is a hunting podcast, I'm going to focus primarily on the hunting aspects and uses of this cartridge. Now, manufacturers have used a simple formula for designing varmint cartridges for most of the past century. Smaller caliber rounds pushing lightweight bullets at a very high velocity. If you conduct a survey of the most popular rounds used by coyote hunters in North America today, you'll probably see two rifles in particular near the top of the list, the 223 and the 22250. Now, the 223 is a pretty high velocity round itself, but the 22250 is a higher performance cartridge that can push the same weight bullet 400 to 500 feet per second faster than the 223. This results in a flatter trajectory and more muzzle energy for the 22250. Now, a flatter trajectory can really pay dividends on an open country coyote hunt. Coyotes aren't very big to begin with, they rarely stand still for long. Though really, you can hunt them almost everywhere in the United States now to include, say, the thicker country east of the Mississippi as well as the open country. If you're hunting in that open country, it's often windy. And things can also just happen pretty quickly out there sometimes. So in a situation where a hunter doesn't have time to get a solid range to a coyote, using a flat shooting round like the 22250 could be the difference between a hit and a miss when the animal is a couple hundred yards downrange. On the other hand, the 223 works in the AR-15 platform, which is far and away America's most popular rifle model. Those quote-unquote black guns have gradually become an incredibly popular choice for predator and varmint hunters in recent years. Among other reasons, a semi-automatic rifle like the AR-15 offers undeniable advantages for follow-up shots when multiple animals respond to a call, or to clean up messes in cases of missed or wounded dogs. Unfortunately, the 22250 is simply too large to fit in an AR-15 rifle, and hunters wishing to take advantage of the 22250's ballistic performance 
in a semi-automatic rifle must use a larger, heavier, and often more expensive AR-10 instead of the smaller AR-15. Furthermore, the 22250 has a slower 1 in 14 inch SAMI standard twist rate that restricts the cartridge to using lower BC bullets that don't perform very well in the wind. That can be a big problem in the blustery conditions often encountered on open country coyote hunts out west. Now, as an example, I have a friend who uses a 22250 for culling big game like Springbok and Blessbok in one of the more open parts of South Africa that somewhat resembles the western plains of the USA. He wants to minimize meat loss on those animals and to simplify his recovery efforts afterwards. So he does his utmost to drop game in their tracks with a single shot to the head using a 55 grain VMAX from his 22250. That combination works great for him, and he uses it for a couple of different reasons. One of which is that it's not hard for him to get those 55 grain VMAX bullets. He's a hand loader, so he has a custom load that he works up for his rifle. It shoots really well, and he has a lot of confidence in it. In fact, he said he can often take several animals from the same herd from around 200 to 250 yards away. And he said as long as he drops each one instantly with a single shot, the rest don't get too spooked. The mild recoiling 22250 doesn't beat him up, even after taking several dozen animals in a day, plus the flat shooting nature of the cartridge means he doesn't have to worry too much about holdover at that range either. But he said that things can get tricky when trying to make a headshot on an animal at 200 to 300 yards if the wind picks up. And that does often happen in that part of South Africa. After all, a springbok or a blessbok head is not very big, and a tiny error in a windhold can mean the difference between a dead and a wounded animal, or a complete miss. And really, he said its performance in the wind is the only complaint he has about the 22250 for that work. So, with all that in mind, you can see how hunters have pined for the best of both worlds, or really all three worlds. They want a compact cartridge with the ballistics of the 22250 that will also function in an AR-15 while at the same time performing better than both the 223 and the 22250 in windy conditions. Various cartridges have attempted to fill this niche in more recent years, but none has really taken off for various reasons. For instance, the 22 Nosler nearly duplicated 22250 level performance with the same weight bullets the 22250 normally uses say you know 50 55 grains but it fell a little short of the 22250 in terms of velocity and it also just never caught on with the public at large likewise the 224 Valkyrie had impressive ballistics on paper and it can fire heavier 22 caliber bullets at remarkable velocities but it developed a reputation for erratic accuracy with certain bullet types and weights. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people experience great success with the 224 Valkyrie. You know, they have a rifle and load combination that just works well together, and they can truly take advantage of the benefits this cartridge provides. But like I said, it was just erratic. It worked well for some people, but not for others. With all that in mind, the field remained nearly wide open for Hornady to roll out a new product to fill this gap in the market. Now, as the story goes, the cartridge now known as the 22 Arc started out as a side project by a couple of guys at Hornady they called the 22 Coyote. And these guys wanted to deliver 22 to 50 performance out of the AR-15. It took over a decade for everything to finally come together for this project, though, and Sammy finally standardized it in early 2024 as the 22 Advanced Rifle Cartridge, or the 22 ARC. Now, just like its cousin, the 6mm ARC, the 22 ARC is descended from the 6.5 Grendel. That cartridge is itself descended from the 220 Russian and eventually, if you go all the way back, the 762 by 39 millimeter cartridges. However, the 22 Arc is not simply a rebranded 22 Grindel Wildcat, as some have claimed. No, it has a couple of important modifications to make it more than just a 6.5 Grindel neck down to 22 caliber. Now, I'll talk about that in a second after I hit the high points of the 22 Arc. We'll start with its physical dimensions. This is a 22 caliber cartridge shooting 224 caliber bullets. 
overall length of 2.26 inches, so it's right there at the maximum of what will fit in an AR-15. Case length, 1.525 inches. It has a case head and rim diameter of 0.441 inches, and it's a little bit fatter than a 223 Remington case. Has a shoulder angle of 30 degrees, like we've seen with a lot of the newer Hornady cartridges. Sammy spec rifling twist rate of 1 in 7 inches, so pretty fast. And a Sammy max average pressure of 52,000 PSI. So like I mentioned, you take all of those things together and you're right there at the maximum of what will fit and function in an AR-15. I obtained an average 22 arc case capacity of 34.6 grains of water by measuring the powder capacity of five individual 22 arc expended cases. Hornady brass averaged their measured capacity. Now, before we talk about ballistics, there's two other important things we need to talk about with this cartridge that go beyond simply making a varmint cartridge by shooting a lightweight bullet really fast as has been the case in the past. So first, the 22 arc utilizes many of the same modern cartridge design principles Hornady has refined with rounds like the 6.5 Creedmoor and their line of precision rifle cartridges that improve their accuracy potential. I won't go into too much detail here, but John Snow has detailed this in the past in an article Uh, with Outdoor Life. So just Google Modern Cartridge Design Principles Outdoor Life. You'll pull up his article and he'll talk about it in more detail. But hitting the highlights here, companies designing new cartridges these days typically employ some principles that incorporate best practices obtained from competition and bench rest shooters to obtain the best possible accuracy. Cartridges designed using these principles use faster twist rates to stabilize heavy high BC bullets They have cases with a long enough neck to support those longer high BC bullets. They can seat those really long bullets to the SAMI specified maximum overall length without intruding into the powder column. They employ minimal body taper, they headspace off sharp shoulders, and they have a chamber design with a snug throat. Well, the 22 arc has chamber geometry along the lines of these other cartridges that Hornady has rolled out, like the 6.5 Creedmoor, all the precision rifle cartridges, all of that stuff. Like I said, it has a 30 degree shoulder for head spacing, that really fast one in seven inch Sammy spec rifling twist rate. It has a long enough case neck and ample head height to use those long, heavy, high BC bullets I keep talking about. Taken together, all of these factors result in excellent accuracy potential for the cartridge with factory ammo and using off-the-shelf rifles. This brings me to my next point about the 22 arc. Hornady didn't simply just neck the 6.5 Grendel down to 22 caliber and load it with short, stumpy, quote-unquote, legacy varmint bullets like their 50 and 55 grain VMAX projectiles the 223 and the 22250 use. Though it is capable of shooting those lighter bullets, the folks at Hornady designed the 22 arc for use with a brand new high BC 22 caliber varmint bullet to further set the 22 arc apart from the competition. Specifically, they built a whole new line of ammo they have dubbed the quote unquote V match line loaded with their new ELD VT or extremely low drag varmint target bullet. Just like the name states, V-match ammo is optimized for match-grade accuracy and violent expansion upon impact with game. Without going too deep into the weeds, the new ELD VT bullet has an open cavity between its polymer tip at the front and the lead core towards the rear of the bullet. This serves several purposes. First, it allows designers to use a very sleek overall projectile shape that still has a high BC, but is also lighter and therefore can be driven faster. Second, this open cavity moves the center of gravity closer to the rear of the bullet and farther from the bullet's center of pressure. Done correctly, this improves stability and accuracy. Third, this cavity also helps deliver rapid, almost explosive expansion when it hits an animal. I'm exaggerating with the explosive expansion, but you'll learn more about what I'm talking about here in a second. 
Furthermore, these bullets use the Hornady Amp Jacket, and it is important to note that this is a very thin jacket optimized for accuracy and consistency, not for controlled expansion upon impact. I don't recommend using this bullet on big game, but it's great for use on paper, steel, and varmints. Anyway, Hornady built a new 62 grain ELD VT bullet specifically for the new 22 ARC. Not only can the 22 ARC fling that bullet really fast, but with a G1 BC of 0.395, it stands head and shoulders above typical varmint projectiles in the BC department. For example, a typical 55 grain varmint bullet, 22 caliber 55 grain varmint bullet, be that from Hornady or somebody else, typically has a G1 BC of around 0.25, 0.26. Hornady makes a 53 grain VMAX for the 223 that has a little bit higher BC because the 223 has a higher SAMI spec twist rate than the 22250. Even that bullet has a G1 BC of 0.290. And that's about as good as it has gotten as far as mass produce varmint projectiles for a long time, really until now. So you can see that even though that, uh, 0.395 G1 BC of the 62 grain ELD VT doesn't sound that great when you compare it to some of the high BC bullets big game cartridges use. It's still great for a varmint bullet. We'll talk more about this in a second on how it translates into actual performance. Okay, now let's talk about actual 22 arc ballistics. The 22 arc can fire a 62 grain ELD VT at 3,300 feet per second a 75 grain bullet at 3,075 feet per second, or an 88 grain bullet at 2,820 feet per second. All three loads use long, aerodynamic, heavy for caliber bullets, and especially in the case of the 62 grain and 75 grain bullets, less so for the 88 grain projectile, they're going pretty darn fast. And you combine that high velocity with that high BC bullet, and you have a combination that doesn't have a lot of drop and it does really well in the in the wind for a 22 caliber projectile. It's also worth noting the 22 arc does really well with an 18 inch barrel instead of the 24 or 26 inch long barrels common with some other high performance 22 caliber cartridges like the 22 250 220 swift. And like I mentioned earlier the 22 arc has the SAMI spec twist rate of one in seven inches in order to stabilize those really heavy bullets. And with careful hand loading, it is possible to achieve even higher velocities with the 22 arc and or to utilize even heavier and more aerodynamic bullets that deliver even better long range performance. Specifically, maximum hand loads published by Hornady with a 90 grain ATIP match bullet which has a ridiculously high G1 BC for a 22 caliber bullet of 0.585, show a velocity of 2,750 feet per second out of a gas gun and 2,950 feet per second out of a bolt gun. And yes, Hornady publishes load data with two different quote-unquote categories of loads for the cartridge right now. One for gas guns with a SAMI specified maximum pressure of 52,000 PSI. This is what their factory ammo is loaded for. And they make separate hand load data for bolt action rifles loaded up to 62,000 PSI. More on this in a minute. Now, while a cartridge that can fire a high BC 62 grain projectile at 3,300 feet per second is certainly nothing to sneer at, the 22 arc seems to fall short of the 22 250 at first glance. After all, a typical 22 250 load fires a 55 grain bullet at speeds approaching 3,700 feet per second, and other loads for the cartridge can reach even faster velocities. So, what was going on with Hornady saying the 22 arc provided 22 250 level performance out of an AR 15? At least on the face of things, that does not seem to be true. Well, let's dig into the details a little more and compare that 62 grain 22 arc load to a couple of other popular varmint loads for the 223 and the 22 250. Now, Hornady publishes their data for the 22 arc using a 24 inch long barrel. This is the case with almost all cartridges. The 300 blackout is an exception, but almost everything else uses a 24 inch long barrel in the specs published by most companies to include Hornady. 
I have an Odin Works 22 arc upper receiver with an 18 inch long barrel that I've shot quite a bit over the past few months. I recorded an average muzzle velocity of 3,202 feet per second with that 62 grain ammo out of my rifle during my last trip to the range. That's pretty darn good performance from a rifle with a barrel 6 inches shorter than the published data. In any case, I compared two data sets for the 22 ARC, one with Hornady's published data out of a 24-inch long barrel, and the other with a velocity I actually obtained at the range with my rifle in the real world, and I compared both data sets using those two different velocities to run-of-the-mill 55 grain 223 and 22 to 50 loads from Winchester's Varmint X line. They both shoot a 55 grain Varmint X bullet with a .255 BC, and I compared them also to a super high velocity 22 to 50 load from the Hornady Superformance line shooting a 50 grain VMAX .242 BC. Now, all of the 223 and 22 to 50 data uses a 24 inch long barrel. And for the sake of argument, and just so nobody could accuse me of bias in favor of the 22 arc, I assume the 223 and 22 to 50 loads were actually achieving their advertised velocity. Even so, the 22 arc delivers noticeably improved performance relative to the 223 in all areas, almost from the get go, even with a barrel six inches shorter. Even if you use that slower velocity that I actually obtained out of my rifle with the 18 inch long barrel compared to the 223, it has less drop at 500 yards, over a foot less wind deflection, and nearly 80% more retained energy at that range. Now, that said, it is also true that both 22 250 loads are flatter shooting than the 22 arc out to 500 yards. But even so, the 22 arc has almost the same retained energy and a small advantage in wind deflection over both 22 250 loads by the time they reach 200 yards. And the performance of the 22 arc relative to the 22 250 only grows in those areas as the range increases too. By the time they make it out to 500 yards, even the slower 22 arc load has more retained kinetic energy, nearly 8 inches less wind deflection compared to the high performance 50 grain VMAX load for the 22 250. The 22 arc really shines in the wind, and that is a key advantage when it comes to scoring hits on smaller targets at longer range. Even a 2 inch advantage in wind deflection for the lower velocity 22 arc load versus the higher velocity 22 250 load at 300 yards is the difference between a hit and a miss on something small like a prairie dog. On a coyote, a 2 inch difference in the point of impact could easily be the difference between a hit to the vitals that drops a coyote in its tracks versus a hit that's not immediately lethal and allows the coyote to escape. And remember, all of that is with the 22 arc load from an AR-15 with an 18-inch long barrel versus a 22 to 50 and a 223 in a bolt-action rifle with a 24-inch long barrel. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the 22 ARC has a SAMI maximum average pressure of 52,000 psi to make it compatible with the AR-15, and like I said, factory ammo from Hornady right now operates within those specs. Hornady also published that higher pressure load data for the 22 ARC for use in bolt action rifles. When loaded to 62,000 psi and fired from a bolt action rifle with a 24 inch long barrel, the 22 ARC can potentially push that same 62 grain ELDVT at velocities in excess of 3,500 feet per second. That puts the cartridge literally neck and neck with the 50 grain 22 to 50 load in the trajectory department, and it blows it out of the water in terms of wind deflection and retained kinetic energy as the range increases. So yes, the 22 arc does pretty darn well relative to the 22 to 50, even with the handicap of a shorter barrel and even with the handicap of operating out of an AR-15. You make this a true apples to apples comparison with both in bolt guns with a 24 inch long barrel and both loaded to similar pressures and the 22 arc does even better relative to the 22 250 and no before you ask you can't load the 62 grain eld vt in a typical 22 250 rifle even though it weighs only 62 grains that bullet is especially 
long and sleek, and it's just too long to chamber in a 22250. Plus, it also needs a much faster twist rate to stabilize than the 1 in 14 inch Sammy standard for the 22250 Remington. So yes, if you have a custom chamber with a faster twist rate and all of this stuff and you you do this and you do that, yes, you can use the 62 grain ELD VT in a special 22250 rifle, but it's not just a plug and play like it is with the 22 ARC. All right, so on paper anyway, the 22 ARC is the almost perfect choice for coyote hunting. This is especially true for hunters pursuing coyotes at night with a thermal sight and or in windy conditions. Obtaining an accurate range is very difficult at night, but the flat shooting and wind bucking characteristics of the round are nearly on par with, or better than, the 22250, and they really come in handy under those conditions. Plus the fact that it is a low recoil cartridge designed for use in an AR-15 also facilitates rapid follow-up shots. Those characteristics make it easier to place shots more accurately on coyotes, which is great, but the 22 arc is also more likely to anchor a coyote with even a less than perfect shot since it just hits with more authority and uses that devastating ELD VT bullet. Now the paper performance of this round sounds great, but what does this actually mean when the metal hits the meat, so to speak? I haven't actually shot any animals with the 22 arc yet, but I have shot these ELD VT bullets into ballistic gel. I will be publishing a separate ballistic gel test video on YouTube for these cartridges where I discuss all of this in more detail, comparing the 223 and the 22250 and the 22 arc to each other in ballistic gel, but I'll quickly hit the highlights with you right now. So first, the 62 grain ELD VT from the 22 arc produced a larger diameter wound cavity than either 223 or 22250 VMAX loads. The 223 and 22250 wound cavities weren't small by any means, but the 22 arc produced a wound cavity slightly wider than the 22250 and quite a bit wider than the 223. Just like you'd probably expect from a varmint bullet, all three bullets produced pretty shallow but wide wounds with lots of fragments radiating outwards from the main bullet track. But the 62 grain ELD VT wound cavity was quite a bit longer than the other two as well. The same thing was true for overall penetration. On the upside, the wider and longer nature of the 62 grain ELD VT wound track can potentially pay some dividends with less than ideal shot placement. Right, just gives you a little bit more room for error. The same is also true for a shot on an animal running directly away from the shooter or strongly quartering away from the shooter. And while a hit from a 50 or 55 grain VMAX will likely cripple the animal if it doesn't kill it outright with a shot angle like that, the deeper overall penetration and longer wound cavity of the 62 grain ELD VT is more likely to cause devastating damage to the vitals of that animal and thus kill it faster. On the downside, I can certainly see the 22 arc as being rougher on fur than the others. If your goal is to quickly kill a predator or a varmint and minimize wounding loss, like during a coyote hunting contest, for instance, then that's not really a problem and the 22 arc might just fit the bill for you. But I personally would be hesitant to use a 22 arc if I were trying to sell the furs of those animals afterwards. So all in all, at least at first glance anyway, both on paper and in gel, the 22 arc with that 62 grain ELD VT bullet, which is designed for use on predators and varmints, certainly seems like it has some definite advantages over the 223 and 22250. Let's talk more about ammo. Now, at this instant, Hornady is the only company that manufactures factory 22 arc ammo. They currently offer three loads for the cartridge, an offering in their V-Match line with a 62 grain ELD VT that we keep talking about, an offering in their black line with a 75 grain ELD match bullet, and an offering in their match line with an 88 grain ELD match bullet. Both the black 
in match offerings are specifically intended for competition shooters who want an incredibly accurate and flat shooting load and wind bucking load for banging steel or punching paper at extended range, and they're not really designed for optimum performance on game. So really, if you're a hunter right now and you want a factory load for the 22 arc, that 62 grain V match load is the only thing available. I think it's great for hunting varmints in North America and elsewhere in the world with it, but it's still really soft. It's designed for rapid expansion and not great penetration. And yeah, even though I said it penetrates better than the VMAX bullets, it still doesn't penetrate great. It should work great on stuff like coyotes, prairie dogs, foxes, bobcats, that sort of thing. I do not advise using the ELD VT bullet on big game. In fact, I've heard several stories of people experiencing terrible results when shooting a feral hog with that 62 grain ELD VT, so I don't recommend trying it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Hornady does publish load data for the cartridge, and you can actually make some 22 arc hand loads using the 80 grain Hornady ELDX bullet also used in the 22 Creedmoor. And yes, you can use that in either a gas gun in accordance with their load data for gas guns or in a bolt action rifle with that load data. And you can make a pretty spicy load using that ELDX bullet that should be surprisingly effective on deer size game. Assuming, of course, you're hunting in an area where hunting big game is legal with a 22 cal. Now, Hornady does not currently offer any 22 arc factory loads suitable for hunting big game, at least suitable in my opinion for hunting big game. But, in my humble opinion, there is a screaming need for some factory loads with that 80 grain ELDX and maybe something along the lines of a really tough 70 grain CX lead-free bullet. We'll see what the future holds on those fronts, but like I said, right now you got those three loads. You got two target loads and a varmint load, and you can hand load for the 22 arc if you want to hunt big game with it. I think the factory loads that are available right now are really good for their intended purpose, but this is a pretty niche round that doesn't have a lot of widespread utility at this instant anyway. Okay, now let's talk about rifles. Hornady, as they often do, did a good job of getting a bunch of rifle manufacturers to pick up the 22 arc right out of the gate at this instant, and among other companies... Aero Precision, CMMG, Faxon, GA Precision, Howa, HS Precision, Odin Works, Proof Research, Ruger, and Seekins Precision all produce a mix of bolt action and semi automatic 22 arc rifles. All right, for instance, a Ruger actually makes rifles in 22 arc. They offer it in their new Ruger American Rifle Generation 2. You can get it in the standard Predator or Ranch configuration with a 16.1 inch, 20 or 22 inch long barrel. Those are excellent options for a lower priced bolt action 22 arc rifle. Uh, Proof Research also offers the cartridge and their bolt action elevation MTR 2.0 with a 20 inch long barrel. That rifle is pricier than the Ruger offerings, but it's also a higher end rifle with more bells and whistles. Now, on the AR side of things, you can either purchase a complete 22 arc AR-15 or just buy a 22 arc upper receiver from several different companies to mate with a lower receiver you already own. Now, I have a 22 arc complete upper receiver from Odinworks. They offer 22 arc uppers with either 16.1 inch, 18, or 21 inch long barrels. And like I said, I have the 18 inch long barrel. Um, It's made from 416R stainless steel, designed for use with a suppressor. They all come threaded, one half by 28 TPI. They come with a thread protector, with an adjustable gas system, and with the Odin XCH extended charging handle. Now, like I said, I just have an upper receiver. I mated it with an old 6-hour M400 lower receiver I already have. That's a good but not great lower receiver. But you can get nicer ones from different companies, either just as a standalone lower receiver or a complete rifle package. But this was a very easy switch, though. It's literally as simple as pulling the the pins out, taking off my old upper receiver, putting the new 22 arc on it, and I was good to go. I use 6.5 Grindle magazines with it, and it works great. All right, so how does it shoot? 
I have shot all three Hornady 22 arc factory loads pretty extensively out of my Odin Works upper receiver. And even using that plain Jane lower receiver with a pretty standard trigger, it all still shot great with all three loads. Um, in each case, I shot five three shot groups for accuracy at 100 yards. I obtained an average group size of 0.846 inches for the 62 grain ELD VT ammo. Average muzzle velocity, 3,202 feet per second. Now, as good as my rifle did shoot that 62 grain ammo, it shot the 75 and 88 grain ammo a little bit better. Uh, 75 grain ELD match load delivered an average group size of 0.768 versus 0.846 for the 62 grain. Average muzzle velocity, 2943. Average group size of 0.782 for the 88 grain ELD match ammo. Average muzzle velocity, 2,718 feet per second. Now, of those 15 groups, you know, five for each load, only four measured over one inch. I had one at one right at one inch, one at 1.07 inches, one at 1.1, one at 1.3 inches. Most of the groups were clustered around the 0.6 to 0.8 inch size. Not bad at all for factory ammo paired with a cobbled together AR-15. All right, so what is the deal with the 22 arc? Is this a game-changing cartridge the average hunter needs to invest in, or is this just another overhyped round that will eventually fade into obscurity after a few years? Now, the 22 advanced rifle cartridge is a niche round to be sure. All in all, I think it is a well-designed cartridge that delivers a great balance of exceptional power and consistent accuracy in a very compact package. And yes, I think it does deliver on the promise of 22-250 like performance out of an AR-15. It's not exactly like the 22-250. It's better in some ways, not as good in others, but it's pretty darn similar. And it's certainly closer to that level of performance than anything else that's in mainstream use out of the AR-15 right now. Now, the varmint hunting market is not that big to begin with, and it's already pretty crowded with, say, the 22, 250, and 223 sitting atop the heap, and then you got other rounds like the 17 HMR, 204 Ruger, 22 Hornet, 222 Remington, 220 Swift, 22 Nosler, 224 Valkyrie, and 224 Weatherby Magnum, and others kind of all occupying the majority of the remaining portion of that niche. Now, if you already have a nice varmint rifle you really like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend making the switch to the 22 Arc unless you just wanted to buy a new rifle. And there's nothing wrong with doing that if you're that kind of guy. I'm that kind of guy sometimes too. Now, like I mentioned, you don't have a lot of options for 22 Arc ammo choices right now. That will probably improve, but who knows how long it will take to reach the 223 and 22250 in that regard, if it ever does. And to be honest, this is the sort of round that, though it does offer impressive performance, really is only something a limited number of hunters can truly take advantage of. Sure, it will work if you're an eastern coyote or woodchuck hunter, but I wouldn't say you need it for those hunts. On the other hand, I think the 22 Arc is a compelling choice for someone looking to jump into the varmint hunting world for the first time, especially if they plan on doing some hunting at night with a thermal, and especially if they're going to be doing some more open country varmint hunting. The same is also true for someone who wanted to squeeze all the performance they can get out of a 22 caliber AR-15. If that describes you, then yeah, have at it with the 22 Arc. I think it will serve hunters like that really well. I am personally skeptical the 22 Arc will turn into a world-changing barn burner of a cartridge. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it managed to elbow itself into the lineup and become a favorite among a serious segment of the varmint and predator hunting world in the near future either. And who knows, this round could very well turn into something like a favorite among competitors in coyote hunting contest. It certainly has the potential to do so. It may not, like I said, ever really achieve tremendous mainstream success, but I wouldn't be surprised if you are seeing a lot of people using this round to compete and doing really well in things like coyote hunting contests. Now, for me personally, I am much more of a big game hunter than a varmint hunter. So right now, I don't have a tremendous amount of use for the 22 Arc. 
I could see me changing my mind a little bit if some other bullet options come out for this round in the near future that I think are better suited for big game. But that's where they stand for me right now. I got nothing against the round. And if it fits your needs as a hunter, or if you just think it's cool, then yes, I think it's a really, like I said, well-designed cartridge that does seem to fulfill on its promise from Hornady. All right, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button below the video to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos coming out in the future about cartridge profiles, ballistic gel tests, stuff like that. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you think about the 22 ARC. Do you think you have one in your future? Or are you planning on sticking with the 223, 22, 250, 220 Swift, something else? Let me know your thoughts. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day and good hunting.